Hi, and welcome to part 2 of your 5th Xcode programming tutorial, where we have been looking at UI objects. So far, we've looked at a segmented control, and today we're going to be looking at a UI switch. We're going to create an app exactly like this, where we'll have a UI switch that when we change the state of the switch, the label's text will change to match this UI switch's state. We'll also look at how we can do other actions when we change the state of the switch, and how we can check when the state of the switch is changed. So let's open up Xcode and begin this tutorial. So create a new Xcode project, and I'm just going to do a single view application and call it My Switch App. You can call yours whatever you want. Select devices for iPhone only. You can do Universal or iPad if you want. For this tutorial, though, I am just going to be using the iPhone. Then we need to select to use storyboards. Again, it doesn't matter for this tutorial, but personally, I am going to be using storyboards. Then click Next. Create your application, and let's get started. We're going to begin in our storyboard, where we're going to drag in a switch and a label. Let's find the switch in our Objects panel. I'm going to drag mine up so I can see the, all the objects more clearly. And you might have yours in a list view, but I'm going to go into a collection view. You'll see the UI switch is the object next to the UI slider, and if you click on it and hover over it, you'll get some information. It says it displays an element that shows the user that the state of a boolean of a given value by tapping the control, the state can be toggled. Essentially, it's like a light switch, I guess, would be the best analogy. You'll notice when you drag it in, the default state is on, and the default tint color is blue. We can change all of this. Let's change the on tint color. Click where it says default, and then click other, and find the color that you want to use. I'm going to use a red. Then, in our objects panel, let's find a label and drag that in too. After all, we do want to change what a label's text is to show us that the UI switch is working. Let's send to the text and make it a bit bigger. Now, we could change the state of our switch to be off by default, so that when our application opens, it is off. But let's switch it to be on, and let's also make the label's text on, because after all, the switch will be on. Then, go into your assistant editor by clicking on the little tuxedo icon. I'm going to make my Xcode window a bit bigger, just so you can see more clearly what I'm doing. After the add interface line, insert a curly bracket and press enter. Then, let's create an outlet for our switch by dragging and then letting go inside the curly brackets. I'm going to call it my switch. So this is really important, the name, when it comes to naming a switch. You cannot call a UI switch, switch. Switch is a programming term, and essentially that means that by calling it switch, you're actually writing a bit of code, and you don't want to do that, you just want to give it a name. Switch is the only object that you can't call it just switch. For example, you could call a button, button, or a label, label, but you cannot call a switch, switch. You will get a lot of errors, so don't do it. I'm going to call it my switch, you could call it switch object, switch on or off, switch UI object, whatever you want, just don't call it switch. Make sure the connection is an outlet, the type is UI switch, and the storage is strong. Click connect and make sure the outlet was created. Then do the same for our label, but make sure that the type is a UI label, and I'm just going to call it label. Then I'm going to drag my switch, un click on my switch, and control click or right click, and drag it under the curly bracket, and create an action. I'm going to call it switch value changed. Make sure the type is ID and the argument is sender and the event is value changed. The event is what sets off the action as we covered in part one of this tutorial. So essentially as soon as the state of the switch is changed, so if the switch is off and the user puts it to on or the switch is on and the user puts it to off, this action will be triggered. If we selected touch up inside as we usually do with buttons, the event would occur as soon as the user clicked on the button, uh, switch, sorry, rather than when the value was changed. So this is how we set the switch action to be triggered when the value of the switch is changed. Now go into your .m file and inside the curly brackets, let's put some code to check whether the switch has been turned on or off. Type if, and then inside the condition, do my switch or whatever you named your switch dot is on equals equals yes then label dot text equals at talking mark talking mark semicolon and inside the talking marks type on then type else if and I'm going to cover what all this does in just a moment my switch dot is on equals equals 
no. Curly bracket. Uh, yep, curl so it closed the brackets and then curly bracket. Label dot text equals at talking mark talking mark off. Let me tell you what this code does. So we know that our switch value has been changed and we want to know whether it's been turned on or off so we can change the label's text accordingly. An if statement is essentially going, if something is true, then do this. Otherwise, do this. So the reason we type else if here is because we don't want it to just go, if it equals this, then do this, and then if it equals this, do this, and if it equals this, do this. We want to go, if it equals this, then don't bother doing this. We already know that this is true, so this can't possibly be right. After all, the switch can't be on and off at the same time. I'll cover that in a later tutorial where we will look at if statements, but for now, I'll just copy this code. We're saying if the switch is on is true, so it is on, then change the label's text to be on. And if the switch is on equals no, meaning the switch is not on, then make the label's text off. There's no such thing as my switch dot is off, so we have to do is on equals no. Let's run that application and see if it's worked. Click run and wait for it to build. You shouldn't have any errors, and if you do, go through your code and see where they might have occurred. It's most likely to be in your .h file if you have errors. Now let's try changing the state of the switch to off by clicking on the circle and dragging the switch over. As you can see, as soon as the value of the switch is changed, the code is going, is the switch now on or off? Well, it's, is on equals no, it's not on. So let's make the label's text off, which is done. So we can change that as many times as we want, and the label will change accordingly. If you wanted to run some other code when the labels, uh, when the switch is turned on and when it's turned off, such as playing music, you put that in place of label.text equals on. So if you've got some code you want to run when the la when the switch is turned on, delete this line of code, label.text equals on, and put the code you want to run when the switch is turned on. If you've got code you want to run when the, when the switch is turned off, put that in place of label.text equals off. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and if you've got any questions about using UI objects, UI labels, or anything to do with developing iOS applications, message us via YouTube, visit us on Facebook, or visit our website, 99centsappdevelopment.com. All the links are in the description. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have, be sure to like and subscribe. See you next time. <laughs>